Dude, you, well, so I'm so glad that I stopped and talked to you that day at Monty's because I don't always do that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can be kind of shy in public settings. And, but I just like whenever someone is drawing or doing art, I'm usually interested in that and so like i had actually walked away and started to leave and then i came back i was like no i'm gonna say something (laughs) i'm gonna be brave and i'm yeah and i'm so glad i did i'm glad you did (laughs) yeah have you been drawing or doing some kind of art for all of your life or was that something that came on later pretty i as far as i can remember yeah it was like my my mom is an artist um and I think it was inevitable because all she would give me for birthdays and holidays was art supplies. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't like a big video. Uh, I guess I played some video games, but I was just super inspired by like cartoons my entire life. Mm. Um, and would just like, you know, I loved exaggeration and was constantly trying to cop, you know, take that on and try to make it my own or in some way or another. Right. Yeah. I can see that in your, so. like, in seeing your current illustrations and drawings, the things you've posted, the exaggeration for sure, and the way <laughs> that you capture, um, I don't know, they feel like such caricatures to me, or pulling out certain features and bringing more attention to, you know, a nose or eyes or a gesture. <laughs> your work is like very, uh, like it feels animated even the still images in the sort of gestures that you yeah. capture <laughs> and i fucking love that which i feel not good at doing that myself i've always struggled to draw in that way what do you remember the kind of stuff maybe as a kid that you were taking in as far as shows or movies or things that you found inspiring whether or, or comics or yeah anything that that you picked up on that stood out to you So I was actually just talking to someone about this at work. Uh, They were asking me what my influences were. And all I could think about was like, I was like, King of the Hill and (laughs) anime. Like, those were like the two uh, that like kind of raunchy cartoons mixed with like these beautiful anime, uh, super exaggerated poses. Um, So I I always loved Studio Ghibli. uh, Oh, Miyazaki stuff like always i think that's really why i got into animation um yeah his his stuff is just so so beautiful and it's in a way like his faces are simplistic um Mm -hmm. but when you think about it there's so much there's so much thoughtfulness in each line and shape that he makes um and then i feel like uh with cartoons like king of the hill and um Oh my god! What else did I get into? I don't know. Even like the Boondocks and Metalocalypse. Metalocalypse. Like it's just like oh, okay. I yeah. liked the like, you know, like the a lot of the faces that they'd make and like the huh, you know, like just kind of. Um, I don't know if I'm even saying anything or if I'm just making weird sounds, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just watching the expressions and and also ty- the, I guess the type of people. Uh, yeah. Like I grew up in El Paso, Texas, so. Um, it was just a mix of, of, uh, people from Mexico and cowboys and, um, yeah, just a lot of culture. And so I couldn't help myself, but you know, in a way kind of make cartoons about him. So. Hell yeah. I think, I think I know what you mean by it. Like, I mean, the sounds you were making and <laughs> boondocks and metalocalypse, like big gestures, you know, big yeah. over exaggerated, um, expressions and, and stuff. And be animating in like an over the top way but then king of the hill is a weird one because that that art style is so muted yeah and was it was it the art or like the comic sensibility that caught that drew you to that show you know what probably the comic sensibility okay yeah um uh just it's like it's funny talking to some a lot of people about that show because people that are maybe from the east coast or even the west coast don't quite understand it um, and I think there's, uh, I don't know. It's like, I know those people <laughs> yeah. and not everyone gets to meet those people. And so I think just 
thinking of yeah i think that's just a huge part of being inspired of what to draw and who to draw and um so what what form of art does your mom make um so she studied graphic design um her stuff is very a lot of shape and color and not so much uh she doesn't draw a lot of people she studied graphic design so just um yeah, big shapes and a lot of color and, and simplistic um, graphic work. Uh, but she ended up, um, when I was like a baby, she started baking cakes. And then she just became like a, she owned a bakery for 26 years, making the most like beautiful wedding cakes I've ever seen. Whoa. Yeah. Sorry, cake boss. You got nothing on my mom. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. So it's always, it was always fun watching her do that and... Uh, I would help her like sculpt flowers and if she ever had a cartoon character for a, a kid's birthday or something she'd let me be take that on because she knew she's yes. like that wasn't her interest but you know she let me do it yes so damn I was gonna say that seems not so far from model making like in a sense cake making and model making like there is oh, a yeah. lot of shaping with your hands going on um so when did that component come in for you, like making models and little characters out of clay and stuff? Ooh, um, yeah, I mean, definitely helping my mom using like fondant. Um, I've always wanted to play ooh. with that stuff. I, I never have actually <laughs> you, gotten to. It's more fun to play with than it is to eat. It's not very okay. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess along with the art supplies, getting clay and... I remember being a kid and like going on YouTube and watching people sculpt or um, uh, getting in and watching stop motion movies as a kid and seeing the behind the scenes and seeing that that's a an actual like toy that they're moving in play, you know, frame by frame. And I was like, oh, I could do that. So, um, of course, I didn't truly know about like the wire and all the mechanisms in the inside. So getting clay and trying to actually you know, move it. And of course it, it looked pretty sloppy when I look back at my, you know, 10 year old work. But, um, yeah, I, I would say that was probably the start was I think media watching movies and trying to create those three dimensional characters. Right. And so you, like you were drawn to stop motion in particular, even as a young age also, or, or did that kind of, did you not notice you were interested in that until later? I don't think I, I really noticed until later um i mean i was always drawn to it i loved uh, wallace and gromit me um, too yes yeah, oh my God, it's, it's one of my babysitters so... bought me the trilogy <laughs> on vhs when i was like 12 years old oh that's awesome Pro- no younger than that and i would watch those fuckers over and over <laughs> so many times yeah incredible like they're still good the jokes are great oh, they're amazing and the animation yeah. is fantastic anyway carry on Sorry oh no no i no, no i i agree with you and yeah. uh i mean even like the like the early um mtv and adult swim sequences in between shows like you know using slime or making cool like you can tell it's clay and that's like i don't know that to me was i guess kind of um an inspiration i'm like oh i want to do that or so just pl- yeah playing with clay um mm-hmm. and, I, and i think when it came to animation uh i remember my mom um we just had like a a com- like a laptop computer that had movie maker on it yeah and i would get like a digital camera and just do frame by frame of course it's like the camera's all over the place and it's but then i'd actually go in and like shorten the frame like put the images in the movie maker and shorten it to like a split second whatever yes. And oh my God, they were so bad. But like, it was, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of cool thinking about that. Oh shit, like I did that. And this is where I am now. Um, wow, this is kind of nice to do this. Cause now I'm like, it's like, you get to revisit yeah. <laughs> thoughts I haven't thought about in a long time. But Right, there was a whole arc to it. Yes, like leading yeah. you to today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I used to do the exact same thing. I would use my grandparents' camcorder cause my parents didn't have one and when we would go visit them and they would let me play with it and i would like you know the nature of those cameras you push record and then there's like a delay and then it records and then you push it again so it'd end up be like three seconds at a time yeah and then also windows movie maker and i would get in there and like 
the janky ass having to like slide the thing slide the bars on either side of the frame and it you know i think it would let you get down to one second maybe Mm -hmm. but it was still sketchy because that program wasn't designed to like fine tune that much right right. it was just for like family photos and goofy bullshit (laughs) but yes like yeah it was totally to make like yeah family (laughs) like what is it called a powerpoints <laughs> yes i don't know right but, um, but it was the tool we had at the time it's, yeah <laughs> it's all right we <laughs> yes so um mm-hmm. yeah doing that and even just drawing uh i had like a, a wacom tablet or something and would draw frame by frame and um so yeah wow. <laughs> thank you toshiba windows movie maker <laughs> right did you want to make this a career from early on or did that kind of form like along the way like yeah um I knew I knew I wanted to do something in art um I was super into drawing and I loved movies growing up that's all I would do is like every other weekend go to see a movie Mm. um and I loved uh I'd be in plays in the summer Mm -hmm. I would do like a summer acting camp um and then joined in high school a little bit and so it was like all these things that you that i i was interested in and and i i felt like uh, also just being super inspired by cartoons um i just felt like yeah this is like animation's it like that's like the one thing you can you can make movies you can act you can draw design um and so i was like yeah that's what i want to do so i applied to um uh, art school and yeah I ended up going to Colorado uh, I don't know if I did I say the name <laughs> no uh-uh. okay yeah so um, uh, yeah I got in to art school for animation and I, I in my mind I was like I'm gonna do 2d animation because I can draw mm-hmm. um, and it wasn't until I think my second year there I was really feeling pretty oh I'm gonna backtrack for a second uh, in high school um, just to show you how much of a, a freaking anime nerd I was and was so convinced that I could work at Studio Ghibli, I took Japanese at in my high school. They offered it as a language. Damn. And so I, w- I was so sure <laughs> that if I um, could learn Japanese and then and then uh, go to art school to learn animation, that um, Miyazaki himself would be so happy to have me. <laughs> I mean, it's not <laughs> impossible. <Do> you- <laughs> Would you still, if you had opportunity today, Absol- to go do that? Absolutely not. Okay. okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. yeah. No. I. I don't think uh, he's very serious about it. <laughs> I think. I think my work is a little too goofy for him. Uh, yeah. But I ended up. Um, yeah. After high school, ended up going to art school and went for animation. And uh, it was my second year that I took um, like a character class. It was char- It was developing character design and um, how we would want a character to move and all that. So um, he had us build, uh, my professor had us build maquettes. So we designed a character and a maquette is just like sculpting this character three-dimensionally so that you can view him for all, from all angles. Okay, I've um, never heard that term, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of, uh, di- like Disney will have sculptors come in and actually sculpt like you know aladdin or the genie or whatever so that the animators can actually have it on their desk and see it from every angle and know that like you know when they're doing a certain angle they can look at it and oh yeah his chin's from this you know um so he had us do that and at the same time uh um i was really getting into like leica and uh, i was talking to him about stop motion and like oh yeah i love the characters and it's so cool that they and he's like, you know, you can, you can do that. Like, you know, your sculpting's not bad. Like, would you be interested in stop motion? And I was like, oh my God, like, of course. Why didn't I think of this? Um, because to be honest, the 2D thing was really, uh, I w- it was like I was sitting at a computer and, and I, yeah. and it's not that I don't, it's not that I'm against computers. It was more of just, I think I just, growing up and making things constantly, I think I just missed that tactile feeling of getting to sculpt and getting to physically draw and and it really wasn't that anymore um so uh i i asked i started asking the school about um doing a a final project in stop motion and 
if there was any classes in it and they kind of told me you know that stop motion's not really around anymore you're most likely not going to have a job in it and those folks <laughs> and the school is also going through this huge transition of um making they really were like pushing through cg animation of course yeah. and um they just you know that's and, and i get it like that was 2013 2014 um and so i was like you know i keep getting no's <laughs> i'm getting a lot of no's at the school not even just animation it was like a project i would want to build and it was like oh well, we don't have the space for the you know it's just like mm. um and so i was like you know i I think if I can find something that is more like a programmer in some school that was geared more towards something like this, then I would want to give it a shot. Um, not quite giving up 2D, but just keeping stop motion kind of at the forefront of of what I think I really wanted to do at the time. And so I found, I came across a SCAD and they mentioned they had a stop motion program. So I Hell yeah. Yeah, ended up going and I actually didn't end up getting to take the class until my junior year there. Uh, just because they didn't have a pro professor. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, this guy came in from New York, and he just, like, kind of blew my mind with what you could do with it. Um, Whoa. I mean, he, like, showed us everything from, like, building the armatures to building a mold to sculpting to building sets to placing a camera. And, and I think he kind of really um, made us all think about film, in a, mm -hmm. in a way of just not just watching it but like like lighting and and what are you, what kind of story are you trying to tell and um i just got so obsessed with it <laughs> yeah and um yeah i mean thank god <laughs> for nathan <laughs> yeah uh cuz he like i think i think i was kind of feeling pretty hopeless until i took that class Definitely. like i really i was feeling pretty defeated and then i was like this is yeah this is it yes so yeah, I, that makes a lot of sense because um, it seems like I know stop motion never disappeared, but it did go pretty quiet for a while there. Um, it seems like maybe early 2000s. I mean, in the dawn of CGI, everything became CGI. But now, especially, I, I feel like I see it more than ever, even little commercials or um, I mean, tons of people on Vimeo or YouTube doing their own thing. But big, big studios too, uh, clearly, I mean, yeah. are still interested in engaging with this or like Adult Swim you mentioned and um, which makes me really happy that it's still alive and that people care enough to keep engaging with this medium because um, I find it so satisfying. Like it just, you can tell that a human made it in yeah. a way that is like nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I, I kind of feel like I mean it's always been around, like you're saying, but uh, part of me feels like it's kind of a trendy thing, and it goes in and out. And mm. so, um, right now is just a really great time for it. <laughs> yes. Um, I think even after I graduated from school, I think it took me at least two years to land um, a gig in stop motion, like a year and a half. Yeah. And it, even when I did, it was like really small stuff. But I mean, even then, like even from those small projects, it was it felt so big to me because it's here you were like getting to work on a set and and put together something that's physically in front of a camera. And it was just a cool process. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you think you get over it, but I'm like still like blown away every time I see like a, a set and like an actual puppet movie, <laughs> you know. Yes. Um, yeah. So from yeah from there on i just i was that's when i had i'd moved to la after school okay. and, and was just doing like um like scenic stuff but then finding like a model making job on in like a small studio okay so. yeah how was your experience in la just as a city and the work you did and the people Ooh. you met like yeah <laughs> i was i was so against it at first i was i was like i don't i really wanted this job uh in new york and i ended up not getting it um so I was like, you know, I'm just gonna give LA a shot, even though I had been there once before, and I was, I was like, this place looks like shit. <laughs> it's like I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just kind of moved there on a whim. Didn't have a job lined up. Didn't even have a like a, an apartment. I was crashing on a friend's couch for a while. Damn. Um, and then like the second week I was there, I landed a like a 
I was looking for any job that involved art and painting or sculpting or just something that I would still get to learn new materials. Mm -hmm. Um, And I found like a, like a scenic painting job. And so anything from like sculpting foam to painting to mold making or whatever. Um, And that was more for like, you know, like commercials or small pop-up shops, things like that. Um, and then there was a, a small uh, stop motion studio and they've grown a bit since I worked with them, but uh, called Apartment D. Okay. And, yeah. And that they maybe bu- rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they build like really cool. Um, they had like at the time when I was working with them, we, they were doing a lot of Hot Wheels stuff. So it was oh, like, cool. yeah. So we were like building like little Hot Wheels sets and they had like a whole story with it. And uh, I think it was mainly for YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So I was fun. So between the scenic stuff, sorry, going back to LA, I guess, uh, between Mm -hmm. the scenic stuff and, and the hot wheel projects, uh, that, that was holding me pretty well. Um, but LA is like, it grew on me. It was like, I think once you're living there, you find there's so many cool pockets of like little art communities and anything you're into, you can find it, whether it's like cool sculptors or, um, like a group of animators that meet at the zoo every you know weekend to draw or nice um yeah a lot of music comedy i think i started really going to a lot more comedy shows there <laughs> oh fun yeah. yeah hell yeah so yeah there's a lot of comedy yeah. so yeah I, I think yeah it's a, it's kind of it's still kind of gross and still kind of dirty but it was sure. like but i think it was like i was only there for a year so i don't want to say like i know everything about la but um, the year that I was there, I think that was the most I really felt like I got to explore. Uh, yeah, just um, myself and my style and the things I wanted to make. Just inspiring because you're just around a bunch of cool artists. So, yeah, yeah, I love that. That's a good answer for <laughs> LA. That makes sense. Um, when you were doing, when you've had any one of these jobs along the way, have you continued to draw on the side just for fun or do engage in other kinds of art just because you like to, if you've had the time? Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, I didn't have a ton of friends there. Mm. So all I think all I would do is go to coffee shops and parks and just draw like, um, yeah, I was constantly drawing. I think I went through, even though I was only there for a year, I think I went through like three sketchbooks. (laughs) Damn. Yeah. That's a lot of output. Right. So, uh, plenty of time (laughs) and a lot of sculpting I started I kept thinking like oh you know I could start if I I started sculpting things and because I knew mold making and stuff I made um started making bolo ties to sell and uh just like little stuff yeah yeah out of fabric but the bolo ties I would I would sculpt out of clay and then make a mold and cast them in in resin oh cool yeah yeah do you still do that or do you have any of those I actually I do I still sell I was selling them at like a work Christmas fair (laughs) um yeah I'll I'll show you photos I'd love to see see. yes yeah Hmm. so (laughs) fun uh you mentioned loving or growing up yeah loving movies going to movies all the time like what were some that other than Studio Ghibli that left an impression on you or maybe some of your favorites or... Oh, or interesting. If, yeah, yeah uh, if any come to mind. Let's see, growing up. Um, or even, you know, just Even now? Anything, <laughs> anything. yeah. I get uh, something... I, I mean, this is... I hate to say uh, anything Wes Anderson, I think. Uh, his... I know it's cliche, but, like, his, his style is just so iconic and uh, he's definitely, like... Um, he got me more into, like... Um, design uh set design and and um i loved fantastic mr fox (laughs) oh yeah um i think that's probably my favorite stop motion movie yeah (laughs) um oh my god favorite movies that's so hard i could i will i will tell them all all to you as soon as this podcast (laughs) is over um Right, right yeah that's fine um any i loved comedy like I love Jim Carrey, <laughs> so yeah, he's great. I, I think Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, the first one was pretty great. Um, yes, I, I can't think of any that I saw in theaters at the moment, but I don't. Yeah, that's a good answer. Uh. <laughs> Fantastic Mr. Fox is so fucking good. I've it's, seen it. I mean, 
I don't know, probably like a dozen times. Yeah. Because I love Wes Anderson too. I I mean, I know he's like hipster royalty or whatever, but that's for a reason. <laughs> I mean, he's a fucking master yeah. and his he's just gotten more precise with each movie. And sometimes to the level that I don't even understand <laughs> how he gets such perfection or like who are his set decorators and where do they find all this shit? They work like, at Leica. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, nice. a lot of them yeah. do anyway. Yeah. Oh, um. cool. <laughs> um, and Isle of Dogs, not so much maybe on the story, but mm-hmm. as an animation piece, it's pretty amazing as well. Yeah, I totally um, agree with you on that. Uh, <laughs> yes. And it sounds like he might be doing another stop motion, I believe, that is about World War II. Um, yeah, I I heard with... Do you know about this? Uh, you know just as much as I know. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. I, I, I've been trying to get it out of people. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of all I know. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, but uh, yeah, I think like his style but especially with animation it's funny that you talk like we talk about mr Fant- fantastic mr fox and seeing it like a million times even even every time i see it i catch something different that i hadn't did i haven't seen before in his act in the acting of the puppets where it's like he has he's so good at capturing just like the smallest little like like little face expressions that right you don't always catch the first time you watch his movies like yes. Ash is hands down like the best character. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh so. gosh. Yes. I know that has to be so difficult to portray in that I mean even even 2D animation like I don't I don't get how they do that. Or like um I don't know. I I grew up loving The Simpsons and just the physical humor and the gestures and the facial expressions when things aren't even being said it it does baffle me the way that comedy can be expressed in that form because there's so much that comes down to timing and like you don't know the end result until it's done and like i would imagine it takes some some redoing sometimes or like scrapping a scene because it didn't it, the timing wasn't right i don't know that yeah just, no, no, that's that's true. It's um like I'm I'm not an animator on any on any of the professional bigger projects I've worked on, but doing it in school and with stop motion it's like, you know, I look back and all of a sudden I realize I fucked up like a like a even like 3 frames, but it's like right in the middle and I know that if I cut it it's going to look weird and if I lengthen the frames it looks weird and it's like fuck I gotta start over (laughs) and that took you like three days to do so you know um I'm I'm sure these professional animators probably you know I don't know if they still run into the thing into things like that I'm sure they do but I definitely did (laughs) in school yeah so it definitely takes like god you gotta be nuts (laughs) I I I didn't I didn't quite have the patience for it yeah for the actual animation itself like or, or yeah uh, yeah it's it's not that i didn't en- i enjoyed it um but i think having the pressure of of really making a perfect sequence and and being on a time frame too i think i just i don't know i just found myself gravitating more towards building and building the the things for them to animate than i did wanting to do the animation sure so. yes do you have an interest in the storytelling side of things or like to tell, to, to write and tell your own stories or animate your own things or, oh, um, man. <laughs> or not so much? Um, I think I, I've definitely thought of characters and, and their personalities um, and, and scenarios that they would be in. But I think, I, I don't think I'm the best storyteller. Um, hmm. It's funny. I'm, I'm actually taking like a comedy writing class right now. Oh, cool. Uh, and I'm like learning. Wow, you're really a bad storyteller. <laughs> um, but I'm 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 figuring out, um, you know, how to. I, I guess I I like the class because I'm. It's like it's making me complete a scene. Yeah. Um, and it's forcing me to to really think about, um, how to end something. And I think endings are always the hardest when storytelling um yeah i have thought of stories i would like to tell i 
they're just a bunch of unfinished ideas because I don't know how to end something or um, maybe one day. <laughs> one day I'll figure it out. Yeah. I'll yeah. S- yeah. So. That makes sense. <laughs> um, how, how did you end up uh, getting like working on things like Shivering Truth and working on Pinocchio? How do these opportunities come about? Um, a lot of uh, emailing, a lot of, e- <laughs> I, I was living in LA and I reached out to um, How Special, which is where Shivering Truth, the second season was filmed. Um, and I was actually coming up here for my birthday because a bunch of friends lived up here anyway. And so I e- emailed them saying, hey, I'm, I'm actually going to be in town. Would love to, I don't know, if you all have time, I'd love to talk to you about your project. Um, and I didn't get an email until the day I landed in Whoa. Portland. And I was like, and then they're like, yeah, can you come tomorrow? And I'm like, oh, oh my God. Yeah, of course. Oh, perfect. And so I, in my mind, I thought it was just like a little tour. Like, um, I, to be honest, I didn't think that I would get a job out of it. I, I was, I was just happy to, <laughs> to, yes. to, to see what they were doing. Um, but when I was going around, I was just asking a lot of questions and, um, I think they could just tell that I was like a nerd about it. Um, and then they said, uh, would you like an interview? <laughs> I was like, yes. And so they, I came in the next day and they just asked me about how I build things and what materials I know and what I've done and what I haven't done. And um, then they hired me. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So then I started like a month late, uh, like a little less than a month later. Holy shit. Yeah, so I just ran back to, I I think I flew back to LA early and um, told my my landlord later. (laughs) Yeah, and I think I was supposed to move on my 26th birthday, but then I ended up leaving like a couple weeks later. They didn't need me until I think like September or something. Okay. Yeah. Dang, that's so cool. Uh, And so with a place like that, did they get... I've always wondered how the work comes in, like if they get big batches or projects at a time and then there's like kind of a dry period where there's nothing to do or is it, is the work pretty regular rolling in? Um, I think with these studios, it it is kind of, it can be patchy. Sure. Um, I'm sure they have like smaller projects, like little commercials and things like that, that kind of keep them steady. But I think the bigger projects are kind of a, once in a while thing um yeah i think shivering was done at the first season and pilot was done at a different studio and then that studio actually took on a bigger project so they didn't have the time or space so that's why it came to house at least that's the story that i know of um gotcha and yeah so yeah that's okay it was a small crew um but it was it was a definitely a big project yeah so. right right and who like because adult swim is the actual producer or they're like back funding the show is that accurate i believe or? so yeah adults and, is um vernon was the is the writer and I, I believe he's done i believe he was a writer on south park okay. oh my god i hope i'm right <laughs> it's, yeah so. I, can, I can cut it if that's wrong or we can clarify later yeah um yeah so then does like a showrunner or a creative head come in like come into town and oversee what's being done yeah so uh Kat, the director cat solon was um uh was directing shivering truth and she's um she's a director in la and she's done a lot of really cool stop motion projects um uh and um yeah, she, I know she's done some music videos, so, hmm. but right. I, I and I know she directed the first season of of Shivering. Okay. So yeah, yeah. that show, by the way, is so <laughs> strange. I like That's I amazing. like weird and dark stuff, <laughs> but it was even too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I'm on the same boat as you. Yeah, it was definitely fun to work on, but I was like watching it. I'm like, what the fuck am I? <laughs> and it's so funny, like watching someone make the puppet for a certain scene and you're like what the fuck is gonna happen in this scene then you're watching you're like oh okay wow all right (laughs) so 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a it's a version of strange that I can't quite handle. Um, yes. Dude, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and then, so how did you end up working on Pinocchio? Um. Well, uh, let's see. So Pinocchio was gearing up for some more model makers um, and Shivering Truth was rolling off. And so uh, there's a quite a few of us on that project that ended up rolling onto Pinocchio. Okay. Um, so yeah, we just, you know, you want, I feel like once you're kind of in the, in it, in the industry, it's like you have all, you have more connections, you have more people saying, oh yeah, so-and-so is available. Nice. Um, yeah, so I went in for an interview on Pinocchio and um, yeah, there you go. I got, yeah. <laughs> I ended up getting a, a junior position, junior model making position. Hell so, yeah. and that was my, that was the first feature I worked on. Wow. So, so cool. Yeah. And so where, where do you like with a project like that? It sounds like there's a lot of, maybe the hub is in LA, but there's a lot of hiring out across the country or how does that work? Mm-hmm. Like how does, I would say the hub is Portland. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I, at least I feel like, I feel like LA has, I mean, you have Stupid Buddy, which is uh, Stupid Buddy Studios there, which does Robot Chicken. And oh, sure. and I, th- I think um, like they always have some cool projects going in and out. Um, and I think in LA, that's probably, they probably are the most consistent uh, gotcha. stop motion work. Um, but there's tons of little studios there um like open the portal does really cool work and um uh i mentioned apartment d Mm -hmm. um screen novelties ancient order like yeah little but they're all like pretty small studios Hmm. um and then i think portland that's oh i will actually um What's it called? Um, Starburn Studios. They did an oh, yeah. Anomalisa, and that was in L.A. Oh yeah. yes, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah. And and Bix Picks. So oh man, I guess there's a lot more than I that I'm even wow. thinking of. But yeah, yeah. Bix Picks just released a show. That I think it just released. It's going to be on Apple TV. Okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, I think I think it it's busy there, uh, but I think they're usually shorter projects and smaller projects. Whereas like I think m- most of the features are done here because of like a um and then now uh shadow machine is is the studio that took on pinocchio um yeah i guess out of yeah yeah, la and and portland okay different types of projects but yeah i sure say so where you actually did the work and the construction of these things was at leica like um in terms of what for for pinocchio no 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 i i worked at shivering i'm sorry at um uh, shadow machine okay gotcha. yeah and yeah. that one is here that also? is also here oh, yeah wow. i've never even heard of that yeah um they okay. so they they actually did the first uh season and pilot of shivering truth gotcha and they all and they were actually originally from la um and then they moved their stop motion part here so they still do 2d cool. animation out in la okay yeah and then what is the process of well, first of all, was it intimidating to work on a feature or did you kind of know how production goes enough that it felt like anything else? Oh, I was totally scared shitless okay. <laughs> the first day. Yeah. Uh, I think I had a little bit of, um, yeah, anxiety of like, oh my God, do I even know what I'm doing? But I, yeah. And then you realize like, I know this glue. I right. know this clay <laughs> like, you know, or, you know. Um, but I, I, I definitely was a challenge at first because it's like I've never built anything that required so much more detail and and structure right um so that was a good it was a good fun challenge and i I learned a shit ton there so nice yeah yes a feature is definitely different than and also the pacing like with a show like shivering was just really fast paced you know we were doing a lot of like if you look at the furniture it's it's not a whole lot of detail it's um Hmm. um yeah simple sets uh super clean simple whereas like pinocchio there's you know there's a freaking bible for what wood grain you need to use you know so there's a lot more uh it it felt like there was a lot more thought into every little detail (laughs) yes yeah yeah i would imagine so i mean del toro is so 
like aesthetically specific across the board with all his yeah. films um and ha so how do you see the imagery necessary to physically make what you're making like is it illustrations is it a bunch of sketches that are done by some other artist or like how do you know what to build it, it's kind of a mix of, of all those uh sometimes there's like a you know um an artist who will help design something uh, what it might need to look like and then sometimes it's just reference um um something that they'll um like it takes place in the 30s like you know um Italy in the 30s so you know you're not gonna see certain things and you will see certain things so like you know what did bikes look like what did uh cars look like so uh some reference would be pulled and artists would kind of you know um redraw what they what it needs to look like or exaggerate something or, hmm. um we would build a um kind of like a kind of like a a foam core rendition of it first to make sure the scale's proper and gotcha. and then the art director art directors would come by and be like you know give approval or not okay. so yeah yeah wow um <laughs> and then you and then you go for it and, oh and i guess it depending on if a puppet is interacting with something or, oh, and sure. what is involved with the prop that you're building um like a you know, if I know if a, if a puppet is going to sit in a certain, it's going to sit in a chair, it needs to be strong as hell. So, like, I would build it out of steel. Um, Damn. So, yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> or, like, um, if it's just, like, a background piece and it's a chair in the background, I mean, I'll use wood or plastic. So. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That wouldn't have even occurred to me. Yes. And so then I would imagine... A lot of what you're making is coming before photography even happens or is it is it simultaneous are they are you building stuff and they're shooting oh yeah and you're definitely. building other stuff as right they're okay yeah so Damn. like sequences and you know you have they'll need a certain set by this date so we're building things for that set and then that can go out and the animators can do their thing and then we're working on this next set or yes. i mean it's kind of funny sometimes i'd be making something and it's not supposed to shoot until a year later <laughs> wow. and so it's funny working on something and then a year later i'm seeing it or it comes back to me to fix something and i'm like wow i'm like a different person now yeah. like would i have made this the same way or like <laughs> seriously so yes. it's kind of fun to i don't know have that little special moment with a with a prop you made and yeah sure. re-glue something <laughs> totally oh gosh that is a weird thought uh and f so like start to finish how long were you on that job that project um let's see from january 2020 to march 2022 so a while okay. yeah yeah wow yeah. <laughs> and then what happened next and or then like yeah. <laughs> yeah i was i was um rolling off of pinocchio um and like i was looking for a model maker so i it's kind of a timing thing I'm realizing. It's really like right place, right time. Mm -hmm. um, part of me wonders if I, yeah, like it's, yeah, I think the fact that I was ending Pinocchio at that time and they were looking for model makers at that time, it just kind of, and they like your work or something. So yeah, you just keep going. <laughs> wow, yes. So. And they've, Leica has kind of continually had at least one feature going ever since Coraline and or like do they make more than one at a time or have like um, prep for you know what I mean like yeah. stagger the the output uh I can't say too much on what they're doing right now but sure. um I know that that's been a plan was to eventually do two features at a time okay. uh -huh. um but yeah so I think that's it's not happening yet but it's it's in the works <laughs> gotcha okay yeah. and they're all self-contained they don't take on other projects or like the other productions don't work out of their uh correct yeah okay. yeah, yeah they they're just an in-house they make their own their own animation <laughs> gotcha okay. yeah they, they're um there was a, there's a studio house special who made the second season of shivering that used to be part of like a 
Okay. Uh, it used to be called like a house. Um, and that split maybe 10 years ago, I'm thinking. I don't know quite the time frame, but that, that used to be the commercial aspect of Leica. Okay. And, and then they, yeah, so now they're their own, they're their own studio. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool to have that so close, like, in <laughs> this city. And, like, I can't believe I've never even been over there to do a tour or anything because I have such a love for stop motion <laughs> in general i'm probably a little intimidated or like yeah i don't know every like production studios and making real features just seems so intense to me and i've always just done such like diy i mean that's stuff. how it starts like we all started just doing and, and a lot of us still just do like little you know paper animations when we're home or something it's it's just um it's it's surprising it's it's funny because i feel like you you at least i was definitely intimidated by like oh no this is this is the big thing like i have to be but then you get there and it's like you know these materials you use them at home um and a lot of new things too that i've, I've you know i learn a new cool tool every day um but i think if you've always been a maker you just you just make things i don't you know <laughs> yeah um so I think I think my my anxiety around it has kind of calmed down a little bit, and it's like uh, I don't know. You gain confidence when you make a prop, and you're like, and you see it on a screen, and it's it looks right. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh hell yeah. yeah, that's comforting to hear. Yeah, yeah. that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep making things. <laughs> yes, excellent. <laughs> I've, that I've definitely done. Uh, what would you say? Is there any different kind of challenge or like a thing? that you really hope to do in the future at some point, whether a certain kind of project or work with a different material or just, I don't know, or make little side projects huh. on your own. I think side projects would be fun. I've, I wouldn't, um, I keep thinking it would be fun to art direct, hmm. but I think that I, in my mind, that means having more creative outlook, but that's really more of like working with creative people to make sure that the art is looking, is on point of the, of what the director wants. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually struggling with that right now. I'm just trying to figure out what's the next step. And, and, um, I love model making and I think I could continue with it and keep getting better at it. Um, working on bigger props would be really cool. I, I think it'd be fun to do live action something one day. So, yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot I want to do, Josh. <laughs> like, yes, but uh, I, I, I think as I'm here and I'm learning new tools and new skills and meeting new people, um, I'll just kind of see where it takes me. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. When you said art director, what does that role actually entail? Or like, what would you envision doing in that role? Is, is it um, defining the aesthetic of a whole project or uh i think more the production designer is probably really the one who um is designing and the sets and the looks of something and i think the art director is more of um the one who makes sure that it stays on point <laughs> gotcha okay yeah, yeah. so um kind of like a director it's like they don't you know not all directors write the film but they make sure that it's the story is being told in the best way it can yeah so yeah yeah i i don't know if i i don't know it's just a thought <laughs> it's just a, oh maybe i could get into that but i'm yeah. still pretty fresh so i i i'm kind of observing as much as i can and seeing where this industry could take me and mm -hmm. um at the same time model making is pretty fun so <laughs> yeah yeah um i meant to ask do you do have you ever like put out your illustrative work as far as selling it or like do just do or is it just more for your own satisfaction would you say yeah i mean uh small things uh i've designed like album artwork for friends oh really um, okay i do actually i've just painted a piece uh i just sent it out today i do like like my friend owns a gallery in denver and i enter this show animal of the year every year oh and cool uh, it's always sold, so that's good. Um, yes. And um, I've done like commissions, uh, sculpture commissions for for people, and um, I've been selling bolo ties. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So I mean, I I, put, I 
I need to get better at that, making more. And, and I think the drawing, probably more of the drawing has been more for myself. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, I definitely love taking on commissions and um, yeah, doing, I, I would like to do more sculpting commissions. That was really fun. Gotcha. So. Yes. Cool. And I like, I guess I don't ask that from a place of, I didn't mean to ask in such a way of like, why aren't you selling stuff? <laughs> but, but not that s making money is the point, but just like, I recognized how good you are and was curious if, yeah, if you like, if your art was out there in the world and if you wanted it to be out there more was the place I was To be honest, from. you actually really inspired me when I met you because um, you were telling me about all these gallery spaces and it's like, I'm like, yeah. And I've, I've actually been to a few of these galleries, but it's like, cool. Yeah. You know, I need to do that <laughs> or try. And um, I don't know. I think, I think talking to you has kind of, uh, kind of uh, lit a flame. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Um, hell yeah. Yeah. So I've been trying to make more an attempt and uh, I've just been really busy in the, this uh past two months so i think i kind of made a promise to myself that february the month of february and really this year it's kind of been a goal to make um more work for gallery spaces and and yes. enter into more things and you know not even just to get an, my name out there but really like to be part of a community yes um yeah, yeah. that's not just stop motion but like artists that are kind of just like Portland artists. <laughs> right. So. Ah, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. Yes. No, thank I would you. love to thank see that happen. Thank you for happen. telling you about that. <laughs> um, yes. And because just in my limited experience, there's a lot of great people here. And like, it's just fun to see so many diverse art styles up on the same wall in these group shows. And it seems like there's constantly stuff happening. And um, I guess, I don't know, maybe that's a good crossover like for my own brain of I used to be intimidated by galleries too and now I'm realizing at least in some cases it's not hard at all to get yeah. connected in to get linked in and then like one leads to another one and um the the connection I was making there of being yeah intimidated by studios <laughs> so just gotta get in no, I, to one of I those get it. as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um is there maybe other than Wes Anderson, anyone that you would love to work for at some point or do a project with? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think Henry Selick is pretty amazing. He just came out with Wendell and Wild. Um, okay. I've not seen that. What else has he done? I know that he, name. I mean, he did um, Nightmare Before Christmas. And, oh, damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he directed Coraline, uh, James and the Giant Peach. Oh. Yeah. He's like, he's like the stop motion guy. <laughs> like he's... I think, yeah, pretty much all his films have been stop motion. Um, okay, yes. Yeah, he's, I hear, I have friends who have worked with him and they had a great experience, so I'm curious. I know he's a little up there in age, but I hope he has some more projects coming. Yes. Um, who else? Yeah, I, I think it'd be pretty cool to work at Aardman. Um, oh, yeah. Like, why the hell not? <laughs> right, uh, right. Yeah, I, f I have a friend, that, uh, a couple of friends that just moved up there to, to work to work on their next project. Um, I'm just so incredibly jealous. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. but yes. maybe one day. They're in England, is it? <laughs> They're or? in England, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. <laughs> ah, that would be so cool, right? I can remember in early internet days getting on some random ass site. It wasn't actually Ardman, but they had a ton of of the Ardman animations and it like I remember my mind being blown that there was stuff other than Wallace and Gromit I think they did one called Angry Kid I was just about to ask you if you knew that one yes yeah. uh which was weird <laughs> that is one of my favorite like it's little quirky. it's only like a minute each episode but they are so good <laughs> yes I love that you knew that hell yeah um Creature Comforts is really good yeah. the original one is really cute like such British humor. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I could remember what site that was, but it, it just had tons of animation. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, it doesn't matter, but that would be super cool. Yeah, Henry Selick. <laughs> James and the Giant Peach was a big one for me. Yeah. Um, 
like I loved that style and I liked how it was a little dark for a kid's movie um and yeah I was just mesmerized by that one <laughs> mm-hmm. watched that one numerous times as well but anyhow yeah. there's and it's cool because I mean there's stop motion all over the world and I'm like I'm like I mean, Instagram is great for that. I'm like finding little studios in Spain and Italy and Germany. <laughs> and I actually came across this studio called uh, Dadomani. It's in mm. Italy. And I'm like, I'm obsessed with their work. It's so beautiful. I'll have to send you a link yeah, to this stuff. Do. But um, they do a lot of really beautiful paper and lighting. And um, mm. yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, I, I got to hit them all. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Um, just to I don't know because I'm sure each studio does its own thing in its own way and um I'm glad I'm I'm like still into it you know it's like I've been into stop motion for a long time and I, I don't I've never stuck with anything this long so I'm definitely like in it for the long run. <laughs> yes yeah oh I meant to ask like so in the case of something like Pinocchio or in the Leica films the puppets themselves are not actually clay, right? Isn't it this no. like rubber? Wh- it's just silicone. It? It's silicone. Yeah. So okay. they build a um, a metal armature, mm-hmm. like a steel armature underneath, ball and socket. Um, and then you know, there's a sculptor who sculpts the the character, body shape, whatever. And then they make a mold, and kind of lay the armature in there, and then they inject it with silicone. Yeah. Wow. So okay. it's it's kind of like. Um, it's kind of like a Barbie doll, <laughs> but you can, you know, pose it really nicely. And yeah. Um, yeah. And it's pretty standard practice now to do like for the speaking, they just change the whole face or the whole head, right. Instead um, of actually molding the lips or. So some know. of them. Yeah. So like, um, like Leica's known for doing face replacements. They'll like 3d print all the faces. Oops, sorry. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, actually with Pinocchio, that was super cool. Cause it, it the faces were actually there was actually a whole mechanism underneath the face and so it was almost like uh like a rubber mask that they would pull over the puppet that would line up with all these little you know um eyebrow points and and jaw so that the animator could actually like pull the the jaw down and pose it and yeah so that was that was super cool to see um to see that part and actually shivering was done that that way as well okay um yeah but I'll, i mean i think that's pretty normal a lot of studios are doing face face replacements okay right. it's it's so much easier <laughs> i'm sure so, yes but, right um, right uh but still pretty cool i mean i know Ardman, they'll do like clay like they can you know move the eyebrows around with clay and stuff yeah which is wild yeah. that they still use conventional clay I and love you can like that. see <laughs> the thumbprints on the the puppet I hear yeah. they have their own recipe for it too. Oh, really? Like they make their clay in house, <laughs> which is like Damn. so freaking cool. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. That's super cool. Um, oh, what did that make me think of? Uh, oh, what's the scale of these puppets, or do they do multiple scales depending on the shot? Yeah, there's definitely multiple scales. Um, um, like, so the the cricket in Pinocchio, there was. I not sure the exact measurements i'm assuming he's around 12 inches a foot at least oh, a foot really? at least a foot yeah Whoa. anywhere between 8 and 12 you know it was depending on the character but yeah it was a bigger puppet um but that's because a lot of the shots were close-ups and so you could animate him and uh if he was sitting on if he was like you know a, sitting on pinocchio's shoulder or something you know they have like a tiny little like I want to not even an inch like you know a centimeter tall uh cricket um and then there was some there was actually even like a giant pinocchio made and uh, they actually have an exhibit at the moma right now with all the yeah so you can actually go see all the puppets and um they have like the the large scale of pinocchio hanging (laughs) <laughs> hanging out Dang. there oh <laughs> so you got I'm so you, glad to know about that yeah I've gotta go. yeah yeah I'm, I'm gonna try and make it out there yeah so i think it's up there until april so okay you have a minute <laughs> right what happens to all these sets and props and like did they keep them did some of them get destroyed did they go into storage or like i'm sure some of them will go into storage um i know i'm sure 
del toro is going to take a few he has like a whole collection from all the movies he's made and yes um so i'm sure he'll want a few things right. um I, n- I know it's actually going to be coming to a museum here too it's coming to the art museum here so if you don't make it out to the moma then <laughs> yeah. i think you'll see it here too nice. um yeah it's kind of going around right now and then i don't i'm sure it'll go into some storage and some will get destroyed yeah i really i don't really know all that that much (laughs) okay yeah i've always wondered about that sort of thing it seems like in an ideal world none of it would get destroyed and it would all get to be like enjoyed but i'm sure (laughs) there's so much of it and that it costs money to put that stuff somewhere Um, it definitely i know storage is storing that stuff is 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 interesting because the silicone over time starts to you know like even like old shoes it starts the rubber on it can start to crack so i think that even happens to these puppets sometimes so yeah. preserving them i'm sure is costly and has right. to be in a certain space <laughs> yes so yes that makes sense hmm. that's the sad thing about stop you know these things that yeah they are handmade but nothing lasts forever so yeah <laughs> yeah seriously is there anywhere you would like to send people to see your work or do you want people to see your work people who listen to this like Uh, and it's okay if you don't (laughs) uh i have my instagram i think that's really all i use okay (laughs) cool thank you for doing this you made it you did so good oh thanks thanks for inviting me (laughs) i'm yeah glad i met you so this is cool yeah this was fascinating to me people are going to be fascinated and um yeah i loved talking to you so thank you yeah thank you nice nice to talk to you